So in this video, we're going to take a look at the um, volume by cross sections, or sometimes called volume by slicing. Um, we're going to look at the first set of problems, and I've highlighted those in yellow. I'm going to um, bring up my revealer, which means I can just show one problem at a time. Um, these are already worked out, and they're in your packet, but I'm going to walk through them because sometimes just looking at the answers might not be enough to support what you're confused about. So in this particular problem, uh, we are beginning, we are going to find the volume of a solid that is formed uh, with the base of the shape. So that's kind of like the plate that we talked about is a circle. Um, and the equation of that circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So a circle with a radius of 1. And for 1a, we're going to create a cake, so to speak, or a um, solid that whose slices are squares. So as you can see, I graph my circle with a radius of 1 centered at the origin. This blue line segment is one representative slice. So what you see here in blue, this segment right here that I'm coloring, is this segment right here in this representative square that I'm drawing. Because I like to see what shape I'm actually forming, and I know the area of a square is S squared. So this is the length of a side. So the length of that side, when you um, solve the equation, remember we had x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So when you get y by itself, you get plus or minus the square root of 1 um, minus x squared. Now, I'm going to color half of the segment in red. So this segment right here touches, remember, the top part of the circle. So that is the positive square root of 1 minus x squared. Um, you can, I'm going to color the bottom half of the segment in black and just remind you that, of course, those two segments are congruent to each other. So instead of worrying about doing um, from the very top to the very bottom, I'm going to write the equation for the red segment, and then I'm simply going to double it. So the red segment touches the uh, top part of the circle, so square root of 1 minus x squared is 0. And then right here, you can see that I am simply doubling the length of that short red segment to get the whole segment all the way across because I need the entire side of that square, because this is not a semicircle like one we did in class. So that's how I got the length of the side of the square. And remember, we're going to accumulate area. So now what I did here, instead of putting the s squared over here in my integral, I just went ahead and said this is the length of my side. I need to find a side squared because that is the formula for the area of a square. So I went ahead and squared it outside of putting it in the integral. So when I square the 2, I get 4. And when I square the square root, it lifts the radical. So I'm going to accumulate. Notice I brought the 4 out front as a coefficient to get out of my way. I'm starting at a low x value of negative 1 to a high x value of 1. My slice is perpendicular to the x axis, so I am in terms of x. And then here's my 1 minus x squared. So, I, so again, I squared the length of the side outside of the integral instead of putting it into the integral and then squaring it. And then you can see my anti-differentiation. And then I evaluated by substituting in the upper bound and the lower bound and multiplying by 4 and got um, 16 over 3. That's 1a. In 1b, we are doing the same shape base, so we still have our circle, and the equation of that circle is um, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. This time they told us that we're going to form uh, slices that are equal lateral triangles. So this segment right here that I'm coloring is one side of the equilateral triangle, and it matches up with this side of my equilateral triangle. So I need to know the length of that segment because the formula 
for the area of an equilateral triangle is the square root of 3 over 4 side squared. So just like I did in number 1, I would actually find the length of this segment right here and double it, which is still 2 square root 1 minus x squared. And the formula, again, calls for a side squared. So instead of putting the, that into the integral, I'm going to square it first. So when I square the 2, again, I get 4. When I square the square root, it takes off the square root. Now this square root of 3 is coming from coefficient. And you may be wondering what happened to the over 4. Well, remember, I have square root of 3 over 4. That comes from there. Here is the 4 that I would be also be multiplying on the outside as a coefficient. So this 4 is from here. And this force from said so they would divide out. So that's what happened with that. And then I have the anti-differentiation and then the arithmetic. All right, let's go to the next problem. The next problem that we're going to look at is 2C. And in 2C, we have that triangular region that we're going to find that's going to be the base of our region. And in this case, they told us to form slices that are semicircular. Now remember, the length that we need for the area of a semicircle is the radius. So the formula for the area of a semicircle is pi r squared over 2, and the radius is halfway across. So be really, really careful because the segment length that we need is this distance right here. So pay attention what's about to happen. The length all the way from the top of the line to the x-axis, the entire segment distance is the equation of that line, which is negative x plus 4. That's the equation of my line that was given. So that's the distance all the way across. But that would be a diameter. So I'm going to take that negative x plus 4 and divide it by 2 right here to make sure I get the length of the radius because the formula calls for the length of the radius. All right, then I'm going to have to square the length of the radius. So right here, if I square this expression right here, the numerator gets squared. So there it is right there. And 2 squared is 4. So I've already squared the denominator separately. All right, I'm formula, forming the formula on the outside of my integral, so I'm going to come back up here, and I'm going to pick up my pi over 2, and I'm going to multiply the 2 by the 4, and that's where the 8 is coming from. I'm going to grab the pi over 8 as a coefficient out front. I'm going to put my negative x plus 4 squared in as my integrand, and I'm accumulating from 0 to 4. And then you can see the anti-differentiation and the arithmetic substitution. All right, the next problem that we're going to look at is 2D. So we have exactly the same region, except for this time we're forming a rectangle. Let me make some more paper here. Well, I'm almost out of space. All right, um, oh, let me get rid of my revealer. Tools, revealer, get rid of that. That way you can see this. All right, so... The slice that you see, this distance right here, it's really important to understand this. This segment right here, we're doing rectangles, corresponds to this segment right here. So that's the base of my rectangle. Now, in the problem, they told me that the height, uh, what did they tell me in the problem? Let's see, 2 area is equal to 2B. So they must have told me, let me go back and read that. 2D, or number 2. Is that number 2? Oh, yeah. So in letter D, they told me that the rectangles always have a height of 2. So that's really important. H is always equal to 2. So that's where that's coming from. All right, let me come back down here. So if my formula is base times height, and the height is always 2, I substitute 2 in place of the height, and the formula for the area of these rectangles is 2 times the base. 
So I need to know the length of the base, which is the distance from the top of that line to the x-axis, which is zero. And the equation of that line is negative x plus four. So that's the length of the base. And I'm gonna multiply that by two. And that's where the area formula comes from. I'm gonna take the coefficient of two on the outside. The negative x plus four becomes my integrand. And you can see my anti-differentiation and my arithmetic substitutions. And that might be all for the first, whoops, there's a calculus simile. So I think that's all, oh, wait a minute, no, I didn't. All right, so now let's go to number 3B and 3C. So in 3B, we have a downward opening parabola and an upward opening parabola forming my plate, so to speak, or the base of my solid. And in this case, they are giving me, uh, we're making cake in the shape of triangles. And the formula for the area of a triangle is one half base times height. But in problem number three, they do tell me, whoops, I'm going the wrong way. In problem number three, down here, they do tell me that, let's see, we're making let's see, isosceles triangle with leg in the base. Okay, so this is an isosceles triangle with leg in the base. All right, so let's go back. All right, so for an isosceles triangle, the base and the height are the same. So if I can find the length of the base, that will equal to the length of the height as well. The base is going to be from the top curve to the bottom curve. So the top curve is, I wish I had these problems on the same page as my, all right, the top curve is the downward opening parabola 2 minus x squared and x squared. 2 minus x squared and x squared. So the top is 2 minus x squared. That's the top curve minus the bottom curve, which is x squared, which is where I get 2 minus 2x squared. All right, so that is going to be the length of the base. So base is equal to 2 minus 2x squared. And we said because this is isosceles, the height is also equal to 2 minus 2x squared. So if I multiply base times height, that'll give me the quantity squared. All right, so the area is going to be base times height divided by 2. This is me squaring the binomial. And then I went ahead, since all of these are divisible by two, I went ahead and divided by two. I could have put that coefficient out front and left it as four x to the fourth minus eight x squared, et cetera. And finally, problem C, we have our dangerous semicircles. Semicircles are dangerous because the formula for the area of a semicircle says I have to do half pi r squared. Remember the radius is half the length of the segment. So we already said from before the total length of the segment is the top curve, which is 2 minus x squared minus the bottom curve, which is x squared. So the distance, although I'll say the diameter, is 2 minus 2x squared. So half of that, the radius would be 1 minus x squared, just dividing by 2. And so that's the length of my radius. The formula for a semicircle is pi r squared over 2. So I went ahead and wrote all of the formula. I squared the r, or I wrote it as a quantity squared. Now I'm going to put my pi over 2 coefficient up front my r squared here from negative 1 to 1. I set the two functions equal to each other to find the bounds. And there's my anti-differentiation and my arithmetic. So that's uh, homework number one on volume by slicing.